Hey everyone, I am Zerocon here, and I realized, um, uh, right after I posted my last video, that this video right now would be my 100th video that I've made. So I decided to do something special for, um, this particular video, and especially considering the fact that Recently, you know, my videos have been a bit, you know, I guess you could say depressing, you know, talking about the video game industry crashing, um, stuff like that. So I decided to sort of make this one more cheerful and talk about something that I actually like. And for that reason, uh, today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite video games of all time. Now, the rules for this are quite simple. Rule number one, and this is the most important rule, uh, in order for a game to qualify, I need to actually uh, play the game. I need to have actually played the game. So games that I haven't played, you know, you might say, hey, this game's better than so-and-so. If I haven't played the game, I really can't judge if I really like the game more than another game. Um, and also to keep, also keep this fair, um, I can really only select one game from a particular series so that way it keeps it leaves room open for other games and you know I can't just like put two games from one series right into there now I'm going to acknowledge when I've had conflict choosing between two games um, but other than that that is really about it so without further ado I will start with number 10 on this list and that is Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. Now, I am a big fan of Dragon Ball Z, and this game, uh, I just love playing it. Now, initially I played this on at my cousin's house on his uh, PS2, and um, I remember playing it and like the gameplay and stuff, and you know, it looked like a natural Dragon Ball Z fight, like you know, how it would look like in the show. And I loved that. Um, years later, I went and bought Dragon Ball Z Budokai, and I was wondering why does it look different um, than the Dragon Ball Z game I played before? Um, you know, this one looks more like some standard fighting game instead of an actual Dragon Ball Z game. So then later, which actually would be like last year, I actually got this. And then all it came back, all the good times I had with this game, and the fact that, you know, it goes through pretty much every, almost every fight in Dragon Ball Z history, and even going into GT, even though that wasn't great, but, you know, this was, like, living out Dragon Ball Z, and, you know, had a lot of characters from the series that it was just great. So that's why this one ranks as number 10. Now, next up is, now unfortunately I don't have the cartridge for this, but I have played it, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Turtles in Time. That was a great beat-em-up, and I've actually even played the arcade version. Um, that was fun, you know, it, the controls were great, you know, the, uh, the music, like, even playing, it was even better with co-op, you know, playing with a friend, going around, I mean... It was a great game, and I just really loved it. Um, I would show you footage of these games in this video, but unfortunately, I do not have a capture card, so I really can't do that. And the only way I'm actually able to upload the Smash Brothers uh, footage that I've uploaded is because of the present uh, Smash uploader thing in the game. So yeah, that's why you're not really seeing anything. Um, and next up on the list is... Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. Now this contains um, Super, an updated, updated versions of Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels, or the real Super Mario 2 known in Japan, the American Super Mario Brothers 2, and Super Mario Brothers 3. And I just remember playing this when I was younger, and it was, I loved this so much. I mean, going around in the games, I mean, <sighs> Super Mario Brothers 3 in particular, I just loved um, going between the different worlds. I loved all the power-ups that you could get. I mean, this to me is the definitive 
way to play Super Mario Brothers. I mean, this, with the exception of Super Mario Level Maker, if you only played one, if you only had one 2D Super, well, apart from, well, if you only had one Super Mario 2D game, I would recommend getting this, and to make it even better, get the version that has Super Mario World. I didn't know that about that until after I, I bought this already, but if you, there is a version where you can get this and it comes with Super Mario World. So I would recommend you get that and you will have the best Super Mario Brothers 2D experience with the exception of um, Super Mario Maker. I mean, there is... The, for a game like this, you know, you really can't just describe why it's so great. But I just love this game so much. And that's why it ranks as number... Well, it ranks as number 8, but... I'll show you other games. So number seven is going to be Final Fantasy IV, um, or two when it came out in North America. This was one of my first uh, attempts at a Japanese RPG, and I loved it so much. I mean, it the story was great. The characters were lovable. I mean, I liked every character in the game with the exception of um, Edward, um, he was pretty useless, but with the exception of him, I liked all the characters, and even some of the villains I liked, like, uh, Rubicante, and even Gobez was a likable character, so, and the music was fantastic, I mean, this game is the pure, it's Final Fantasy, that's all I can say, it's Final Fantasy, it's the pure definition of what fi of Final Fantasy Final Fantasy games should be and like you know I've played other Final Fantasy games but that one really just like I loved it so number let's see what number that is so number six on this list it was I was torn with it for this one because I was going to select Mega Man Zero, uh, Mega Man Zero Three uh, for the Game Boy Advance for this uh, slot. However, because reason being, because the story was good, it was better. It's the best out of all the Zero games, but this one in particular I liked most because the gameplay was great, the story was great, and the music was great. However, one game stood above that, and that was Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo. Now, Mega Man X took took Mega Man and like made it a hundred times better. I mean, the uh, gameplay was better because you felt more in control over X than you did over Mega Man, whereas everything was clunky. Now everything was like really smooth and you know, it just felt so great. The music was great, the story was great and it was, I guess you could say darker somewhat because of, you know, it was a bit more serious. But I just thought it was great, and the music was great. You no, know, Zero was cool, X was cool, and you know, that was just like t to me. That's the one of the best Mega Man experiences that I've ever had. So that is why it ranked above Zero Three. But I still recommend that you play Zero Three though. So number five was going to be Kingdom Hearts Two. For the PlayStation 2. However, I have never played Kingdom Hearts 2, so... I mean, I followed the storyline for the entire... Because I like Kingdom Hearts. I followed the story throughout the series, and Kingdom Hearts 2 looks... Even though graphics aren't... Like I said, graphics don't make a game, but it looked better than Kingdom Hearts... The first Kingdom Hearts. You know, the designs I liked. Um, the story is arguably equal to the first one and the gameplay from what I've seen looks great so that's why I wanted it to be there however I could not so I found a suitable replacement Fire Emblem Fates or more specifically Fire Emblem Fates Special Edition now the reason why I'm saying this is because you get Birthright, Conquest, and Revelation on one cartridge so you get the entire experience right there. And so you get to choose between uh, which sides you want to take, or if you even choose a side. 
and I that's something I loved about this game. Even and even though, you know, if you didn't get that, you'd have to choose between which one. Each game is different. It's not like Pokemon where the only thing different are the Pokemon which you can find. The, it's the story is completely different, you know, and I actually got attached to the characters in the game, and that is, and the fact that you know you can forge relationships is makes it better and more personal than Final Fantasy IV, where I love the characters, but with this one, you know, you get, you can actually forge a relationship and, you know, develop a bond for your teammates, and if they die, you know, well, I played it on, you know, classic uh, settings, they're dead for good, so you lose that character that you've worked with, that you've developed, um, you know, it's gone, so that's why I just really love that game. Um, next up is Metroid Prime for the GameCube. Now, originally it was going, this choice was going to go to Zero Mission, but unfortunately Zero Mission was so short that, you know, it lost this. Not to say that Zero Mission was bad, it was just felt too short. Because once you beat the game, you can easily beat it within two hours at most. Um, but with this one, you know, it retains the feeling of a Metroid game. The exploration, you know, the it, you have to explore just to, like, develop the story itself. You know, scanning items. You understand what's go happening. And this is just a great game. I mean, if you've played this, you know what I'm talking about. So I really don't even need to explain this uh, in much detail. Now, next up is, go is going to be uh, number three. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Now, this was going to be Twilight Princess, but I haven't played Twilight Princess enough in order to actually say it's better uh, than Link to the Past, but uh, later I, I might actually continue on and then like say this is better, but for now, Link to the Past is going to be ranking here. Why? It's just so fun of a game. I mean, the story is good. The gameplay is excellent. The music is great. Um, going back and forth between the worlds of light and darkness, you know, that was great. And one of the earlier, uh, one of the earliest games to demonstrate going back and forth between a light and shadow world. I mean, there are probably other games that did it, but that's one of the earliest ones that I can recall. Um, and, you know, it's just, it was a great adventure for me. And that's why I just really love this one so much. Um, so next up for number two is Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Now I have played all four um, Smash Brothers games, so this one just really takes the cake. It's just a great experience, you know. It took the best of uh, Melee, and even though you know Brawl was, it was a bit of a disappointment for me, but. It incorporated, I guess, some of the good aspects of it, especially, you know, the main theme is here in bits, but, you know, it's here in this game. Um, you know, the characters are great, you know, um, even though there are still some clones, but that's debatable. And I really just love the fact that now we can play with eight characters. Um, the Amiibos are great to use to train with. And overall, this has just been a very fun game for me to just play, and it's Smash Brothers. Now, number one for my list is going to be Batman Arkham City. Now, the Arkham series you've probably played, but this one has great because it has the voice actors from the series that, you know, the Batman the Animated Series that, you know, Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy in here and they of course are top notch um the story's great the music's great the combat's great you know and it's just you feel like you're batman you are batman when you play this game and it, you know so much of the comics are here in this game so that's why i just love it and i'm a big batman fan so this what the game just like stood out as being one of the best Batman experiences I've ever had. And yeah, I'm sorry this video seemed rushed, but unfortunately I do have a time limit for like uploading videos. So that is all. I am Zericon signing off.